investment. If you are technologically inclined, it's still a great country. We're in this industry. We know there's lots of opportunity. It's always a great time to start a company. This is a, a really important data set for us to all look at. This shows in 2020 dollars per capita income in the U.S. by quintile. So the top 5% of earners in the U.S., you know, since call it the mid 90s, have seen a near doubling of their earnings. The top quintile, which is the top 20% of earners in the United States, have seen their earnings climb by 60%. But the rest of America, the other 80%, have been flat. Yep. And I think what, if you are born into the United States or told the story of the American dream, the story of the American dream is you can come here, work hard, be smart, make, put in the effort, put in the time, and you'll be able to progress in your life in terms of comforts and assets and all these things. And for most of Americans, that story has not played out. They've worked hard. They've put in the effort. They've tried to be smart. They followed the rules. They've done what the systems and the governments have said you should do in order to get the rewards. And they're left with flat earnings over several decades. Um, and that's the story of America right now. And because of this, the top 20%, the top 5% have acquired, you know, an outsized amount of the assets, an outsized amount of the income, as, as we all know and have all benefited from. And the vast majority of Americans so that have been you working, Wait, I have, jobs I have and a working careers. I have a yeah, question yeah. for Freeberg. Freeberg, do you think that we should implement policies to change the lines on this graph? That's exactly what I was going to ask. Yeah. I, I want to reference you guys to the Tim Ferriss interview with uh, Charles Koch from a couple of years ago. In that interview, he gives a really good example, and I'm going to mess this up a bit. But he talks about how certain women that are hairdressers in the inner city, they want to go do this uh, hair braiding thing. But in order to do it, they have to pay thousands of dollars to school to get certified. And then they have to go to the city to get a license in order to be able to do that job. So the economic cost of getting there is insurmountable for them. And there's countless examples like this, where in the US, we've created policies that have attempted to be forms of protection, or perhaps be forms of income generation for cities and governments and so on, that in the process, unfortunately, have limited the mobility of people that want to be individual earners and entrepreneurs in the US. I think that is the first thing I would do to address this problem. Give every American the opportunity to be an entrepreneur, to build their own path. Do you think that hair braiding licensing, fixing that problem will cause the dashed black line or the blue line to shrink? Or I guess what I'm trying to ask you is, should yeah. those lines shrink? Yeah. I don't think it's the government's role, right? I mean, I'll tell you. I'll, well, I'll hold on, Jason. I'll I'll talk 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 hear, I just want to know. I want to hear. I want to hear Friedberg's answer, Jason. Okay. Stop I'll answer the question. I'll answer okay. the question. Okay. Um, I've said this in the past. If you shrink those lines, you will limit overall progress. And what I mean by progress is improvements in productivity, improvements and advances in technology, in business, in economic growth. Because we've seen this many times in the past, there's a certain limit on taxation. So one method is to tax, right? Pull more money out of the top earners and redistribute it. The problem is when you do that, there's less capital in the hands of those who have proven themselves to be good at driving productivity and improving access for goods and commodities and things that are cheaper for everyone. So... There is a cost to doing that. And that has been, this is, this is played out. I mean, this is the Roman Empire. This is the British Empire. This has played out countless times in history. In recent years, it's played out probably half a you're, dozen you're times. Evading, you're evading the question. I just you want to know what you think. What do you think? I think that there's an important balance to strike. So I don't think it's about taking away from the top as much as it's about enabling the bottom, if that makes sense. It doesn't because that's what everybody says they want to do. And this is, it's been 50 years of people saying that it doesn't work. What? Yeah. So he's not going to answer. So you answer, Chamath. What do you think? I'm just telling you there's a consequence to doing, you know, whatever we want to do to try and make everyone equal and end up in no, a no, social here's, state. Here's my, here's my right? issue. I, the, the way that you present it, like you tell it in a language. And even I felt it where I was like, wow, this guy's really empathizing. Wow. My God. He's really. But then the follow up to like, well, what would you do is non existent. And I think that that's the real problem. A lot of people want to pretend that this is an issue and they want to get the sympathy of the masses by giving the populist rhetoric of why this is an issue. But when push comes to shove and the question is, do you believe that the dashed black line or the blue line should be legislatively brought down to meet the other lines? People just evade the question. In my perspective, the answer is no, you cannot do that. And the reason why United States GDP is where it is, is because of that dashed line. 
It's an existence proof of the fact that this is the largest economy in the world. And so one has to make a really simplistic decision, which is, do you want economic supremacy and then try to figure out ways of rebalancing things, or do you not? I say you absolutely must start with that, which means that that dashed line and that blue line will always have a rate of acceleration that is greater than the other lines. And that's just natural OPEX leverage that exists in any company. If you look at a company with 50% EBITDA margins versus a company with 15% EBITDA margins because one uses technology and the other one doesn't. It's capitalism is rife with these examples. Yeah. Chamath, that is the smartest, best thing you've said in 142 episodes of the All In Pod. (laughs) 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 But I agree uh, 100%, Chamath, with your... I think it's well said. But then you should just say it. I think we do a huge disservice by pretending to care and then not seeing the ugly truth. The ugly truth is none of us want the government to try to bring that dashed black line or that blue line down. We want them to stay out of our way. That is the truth. Yep. So if you talk to that guy that wrote that song and his 80 million followers, he I don't think what do you say to them? What do you say to them? I don't know. Can I take a shot it's, at this? It's my honest answer. I want to get Saxon. Saxon, go. Okay, look, I think when you see a chart like that, the natural instinct is that you want to argue for redistribution. You basically want to take from one of the top lines and just give it to one of the bottom lines. And I think that only works to a degree. I think it's important that we have a social safety net. But what we've seen is that Marxist redistribution doesn't ultimately work. It actually makes a society poor. I think this is where Chamath is right. The simplistic solutions don't work. We're not going to move from fundamentally a capitalist system to a sort of Marxist redistributive system. But that doesn't mean that we can't do things to improve the situation for the average American. And I think there the policies are more complicated, but I think we could have much more prudent handling of our fiscal situation so that inflation, for example, doesn't eat away the wages of American workers. I think we could have a much more sensible immigration policy so that there's not I think a lot of competition for, let's call it low-end jobs. I think we could have had a better um, trade policy with China over the last 20 years. I think there are things that we could do that were more nuanced that would have improved the situation for working-class Americans. And we didn't do it. And you compound that with, again, all these elite failures around things like COVID, around things like foreign wars. And let's add to this the Robert F. Kennedy Jr. critique of regulatory capture, that the military industrial complex is bleeding this country dry. And I think you add all those things together, and I can see why there are complaints. There have been three major responses over the past 50 years to this problem. The one, and, and all of them involve creating budget dollars to fund access to everyone of three major things, which is healthcare, education, and housing. And it, it sounds good in principle. It is a good thing to say everyone deserves to have access to buying a home. Everyone deserves to have access to an education. Everyone deserves to have access to health care. The problem is when the federal government has stepped in to build the programs to provide these solutions, they've created extraordinary incentive problems that have caused asset bubbles and have ultimately caused failure in the underlying system that you're trying to give everyone access to. We have told every American that they should put all of their net worth and more into their house. And as a result, we've had to continue to drive up the price of housing in the US, drive up, create a housing bubble by pouring a ton of capital in to keep that asset safe and protected because it is where most Americans have put their nest egg. We've given everyone access to an education by giving free student loans out. And those student loans have caused an asset bubble in the price of education. And we have tried to provide healthcare to everyone through the federal government that has no accountability. And as a result, the cost of healthcare has ballooned. So I, I think the, the, the one question for you guys is, in the sense that most people are saying, these are three critical things that I need access to. But when the federal government gets involved and provides them the cost soars, and we have all of these bubble problems and disincentives that arise in the system and money gets stolen and yada, yada, what's the right solution then, right? How do you provide sex that, 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 you know, that 80% of Americans access to these things that, you know, boosts their condition in life without causing what is effectively inflation across all of them. I, I, don't, I don't think those I, are these I, I areas. Here. Yeah, I, I would like to start by just saying, when we look at this chart, it, I think it maybe looks worse than it actually is in reality. 